Welcome to the virtual lunch. Today is Friday, July 15th, and this is virtual lunch number 597. Our guest today is David Cunningham, and he is the chief innovation officer at Reed Smith. He's also the founder of Legal Metrics, and this is part of our series on data science and the business of law with Origami. Dave, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Well, of course, I, I don't really want the spotlight. I feel like everybody should be uh, having their five <laughs> minutes rather than just listening to me, but uh, happy to be here. Thank you, Ari. Great to be here. My name is Paul <laughs> Gadritis. I am founder and president of Origami. We're sponsoring this month's virtual lunch with Ari Kaplan. Origami is a client intelligence platform that uses artificial intelligence on firm data to help firms do kind of two main things. One is to grow their client revenues. Another objective is to protect the client revenues, help prevent churn and retain clients better. Origami was incubated within Axiom Consulting Partners, which is a Chicago-based management consulting firm that has a decades-long professional services practice. And we are bringing our solution to market this year. So very excited, David, to hear about legal metrics because we calculate all kinds of legal metrics and talk about ways we might collaborate together in the future. That sounds great. Well, sure, sure. So I've been at Reed Smith a year and two weeks. So I feel like it's been Six months. I'm almost disappointed to say it's been a year already because you you want to get so much done, and we are we are in the midst of you know everything. So yeah, my role is a chief innovation officer. It's a new title to the firm. There's certainly you know not a new title in the industry, but Reed Smith is a bit unique in that they they've already been investing in innovation for you know ten years or so. They've they've kind of got all the teams that do innovative stuff. And so my role wasn't to figure out how do we get started. It was to say, hey, we're doing so many things. How do we bring it together to create more synergy and get things aligned and do some bigger things together. And and so that's what we're in the midst of and 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 so what's my scope? We're figuring that out as we go. It is often an innovation officer is, uh, is in charge of shiny things and, and a committee and doing things kind of as a, a side project. And we're taking a very different approach here, which is really to say, let's, let's innovate how we run ourselves as a great business. And so it's a very core role. In fact, our, our head of strategy reports to me in that sense, which seems a little backwards. But the idea was, hey, that's we want to align strategy and execution. We want to make sure that we are uncovering everything that can help us be a better business. And so it, it's, I, I would argue, well, I can talk about lots of stuff. Most of the stuff we're doing isn't innovative. It's just saying, how do we grow up as a firm and be a really lean nimble data driven machine that can know what it's doing and fine tune itself. You know, that's, it's really about business acumen for, for now. I mean, hopefully we do a lot of uh, cool things as well. This is just a, a screen grab from uh, a graphic, but this is context to answer your question at the highest level is we I wanted to use a balanced scorecard approach to our planning because it's very easy for a law firm to just think about the financial aspects of change. And in fact, even at our firm, before I was hired, there was an article about our managing partner saying, hey, we met all of our metrics this year. And the metrics were you know, realization and profitability and, you know, and, and another financial metric. There are three financial metrics. And I, Connie Breton from, you know, the originator of Clock is, is one of my mentors. And I always have her in my head saying, saying, what about the client? What about the client? You know, and so the client doesn't want to hear you, you know, all your goals for just not making more money. Right. And so this is a way to keep us on target because as a firm, we plan in a balanced way, but it's easy to focus our projects in just certain areas. And so this is saying, if you're not familiar with the balance scorecard approach, it's very simple. It's saying, these four areas need to be in balance. You know, on the right side, we're, this is kind of the financial aspect. How do we, how do we have, how do we make money on our matters, and how do we do that with assurances of predictability, which is what you know, clients want to know: is this how much it's going to cost? On the top side, though, we're really saying how, how, we're focused on the client. What's the client's perspective, and how do we provide value in their context? And then in the bottom is the employee's view. 
how do we make sure that the people who work here are engaged and have the right skill sets and are growing and reusing them well? And on the left side, balance scorecard, it would say something about uh, process efficiency or process improvement. Here, I took that as, you know, how do we differentiate ourselves? How do we not just be another firm delivering the same old stuff? How, how do we use our processes to stand out and do something different? And, and so the idea here is, if you're just focused on the money, maybe you can improve some numbers in the short term, but for the long term, all these need to be in balance. And, and I think it makes sense. If you're differentiating yourself and your clients are raving fans and your employees really like working there, of course, you're going to make more money. You know, they all go hand in hand, right? And so, and so all of our projects are working toward those four objectives and, and saying, we've got to keep doing all four. And whenever we triage or prioritize or take a fresh look at the budget, I, I make sure that we look at those equally. We don't say, well, let's cut the ones that are that the client care about, you know? And so from a process, from a data analytics, from a talent side, we're, we're making investments in each of those. I can go into detail on each of is, is helpful, but that, I want to give at least the context for that. Thanks, Ari. Well, David, first of all, thanks for sharing so much about kind of how you approach innovation programs. It's really sure. interesting to kind of hear it like under the hood, how you think about the different areas and all that stuff. I am curious about to hear a bit more about legal metrics. It just so happens that I'm representing Origami at Iltacon 2022 on a panel that is entitled Building a Legal Metrics Program to Measure Business Outcomes and Demonstrate Value. So oh, there you go. Perfect. It's a topic of a keen interest to me. And of course, I, so I'm kind of curious to hear like the story of how, what drove you to found legal metrics, as well as kind of how the business model works, because it sounds like it's kind of a consortium of different types of firms and entities and sort of, you know, where you see the program headed and how folks like myself and maybe firms that we work with might engage with the organization and the project. Yeah, yeah. that's a... That's a big setup. I'm always happy to talk about what we're doing. Um, so I mentioned uh, Clock before and, and Connie Brenton specifically. Um, they, they, they took me in, even though I was working at Winston at the time, they, they took me in under their wing and said, uh, hey, we, we find it uh, hard to work with law firms. So we want to invite a couple of people from law firms in to hear the angst as legal department leaders that we have. And that, that was pre-Clock. That was you know when there were 10 people in Clock. And, and so I, I got a huge context of Law firms are measuring finance and the legal departments are quickly ramping up on, on analytics to measure satisfaction, outcomes, cycle times, the diversity, and all the, uh, you know, the, the other aspects that they measure, including the financial. And, and, and so I spoke on that topic you know, 20 times. Every clock, except the most recent one, I gave the same presentation on, look at the gap, wake up, you know, look at these dashboards from these 20 legal departments. And so... Uh, eventually, I realized that that's a really slow way to change the market is just to talk about it in a one hour presentation. And so um, the, the consortium is really a design beginning for us to say, hey, if we, we we could automate this, you know, we can talk about it. But what if we just automate the calculations and get everybody on the same page? And so we we were fortunate to have over 60 law firms and legal departments give us guidance along the way on what would be useful. And and, and it began the, in our initial focus and, and really our home today is, is the diversity metrics. And so, and so what, we're, what we do is we take all of, the, all of the diversity reporting that a law firm has to do, all the ABA and American Lawyer and Diversity Lab and Bloomberg, all of those, and, you know, working mother is always, you know, that's an eight hour project for people. And then you have all of the client RFIs that come in the door as they tell me about your diversity and they're often written in different ways. And then you have the internal reporting and, and we learned that diversity leadership are doing that all, all manually and all the rules are different, right? Some look at uh, defined equity partners differently. Some look at the calendar timing differently. And, and, and so people are buried in that and um, and also just submitting surveys once a year to say, here's my results. I'll find out how I look, you know, when it gets published. Dave Cunningham, everybody. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We did it. Fantastic. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for, for being part of our conversation. Thanks so much to the team at, at Origami for supporting this uh, series on data science and the business of law. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. Thank you again. Thank, thank you. Ari. Thanks for bringing us together. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Good to meet you guys. Bye-bye. Good to meet you.